This is the film you get when James Wan combines the films of Peter Jackson, Sam Raimi, Dario Argento, and Frank Henenlotter into a blender and then blends them up, drinks them, and then regurgitates them back onto the screen. And if that metaphor sounds weird, it actually works kind of well. Hey everyone, Ryan Reed here, and today we are talking about James Wan's new 2021 film, Malignant, which just came out, I think like a week ago, on HBO Max. And uh, I gotta say, I was hesitant to see this movie originally. I've talked about James Wan a little bit in the past in my Conjuring the Devil Made Me Do It review, which he did not direct, but obviously he had a big hand in that universe. And uh, to go into a little bit more detail, basically I like James Wan. I think he's a really talented filmmaker, but I will say I've enjoyed his earlier films more than I have his later films. They're just not necessarily for me, but the original Saw, the underrated but slowly gaining a cold status dead silence and his third film death sentence which i still don't think gets the recognition that it deserves uh, are all fantastic to me and then after that he made insidious and i've never really been a big fan of insidious i think a, a lot of the stuff in that film just doesn't doesn't work for me it's kind of like filled with jump scares and none of the jump scares to me are, are executed effectively he then followed that up of course with insidious 2 the first conjuring which i did like at the time i think the first conjuring stands up as a, as a fairly decent horror film um and then he made the conjuring 2 which i also didn't like and unfortunately and this is not the fault of james wan but unfortunately those two series insidious and the conjuring which he directed the first two in both of those uh, they they definitely they ushered in this new era of of mainstream horror movies. There's nothing inherently wrong with a movie being mainstream. I think movies for general audiences. I mean that's totally fine. Directors like Steven Spielberg have made careers out of that, you know, forever. But for when it comes to horror, having these like mainstream horror movies that are very much just built around jump scares, which I've talked about at length. Cheap jump scares, jump scares that aren't earned, that are just throw in as many jump scares as you can. That type of stuff, it, it, I'm not a big fan of these kind of like new movies, these new mainstream movies. Now, every once in a while, of course, you do get something different, and that's just, you know, a broad statement saying that like all mainstream horror movies are bad. That's not the case at all, but I think a lot of those studio big budget horror movies where they're, you know, throwing millions of dollars at these things, they kind of miss the mark for a lot of horror fans. Well, James Wan also went on to direct um, the uh, Aquaman film and the Furious 7, the seventh Fast and Furious movie, but he's back with Malignant, his new horror film, his first, you know, step into horror in a quite a while now. And uh, when I first saw trailers for this, the brief few trailers I did see, I was like, I pass. Because it looked exactly like every other kind of modern horror movie and, and these ones that James Wan kind of, kind of ushered in. It didn't feel like his old work, it felt like his newer stuff. Which, again, isn't inherently bad, it's just not for me. Well, I read one review on just kind of like a basic pop culture website, and they gave it a mediocre review at best. They gave it like a 5 out of 10, and they were just not a big fan of it. And I was like, alright, well that about says what I expected this movie to be. But out of curiosity, I read another review on a horror movie specific website, and they gave it a fantastic review. Um, and they were saying that it's really a movie built for horror fans, and general audiences are probably not gonna dig this as much. And I went through the comments, and a lot of people were, were saying, yeah, it was really great, and they were comparing it to different movies. And so I gave it a shot. And I'm really glad that I did. Um, this film is really surprising in what it does. And yeah, I would 100% agree with that statement that this is a movie built for horror fans. This, this film is not what you expect. The trailers make it out to be one type of movie, and it's really not. Um, again, that comparison I made at the beginning holds very true. Uh, this is a James Wan movie. A lot of his style is there. But really, this is a movie from a bygone era. And I think a lot of people are going to see this movie who are maybe going in expecting an Insidious or a Conjuring or something of that nature, and they're going to hate it. And I think some of the reviews and a lot of like audience things you know, that I've seen pop up here and there, they've kind of confirmed that. Now, look, that is not saying that, again, 
every audience member who's not a major horror fan is going to hate this movie. Maybe people will discover this movie, but I have a feeling this is going to be a lot like uh, Dead Silence. Uh, his his second film, where it did not do, you know, crazy well at the box office or critically, and now it's gained this cult following as, like, a flawed, yes, but a very interesting, very atmospheric, very well-done movie for that particular genre and that subgenre of horror. And I think this film, Malignant, is going to follow suit with that. Again, the less you say about this film, the better. If you want to go in completely, you know, uh, completely unfamiliar with this movie and you just are looking for a new horror film, definitely if you're a horror fan, if you're a horror historian and you're you're into horror movies and the, the process behind them and just kind of like the history of them and you're into older horror movies, uh, you know, from the, the, the 80s, even some stuff from like there's a little hint of like the 90s in there and stuff like that if you're into those kind of movies you'll probably dig this so i highly recommend going and checking it out maybe you'll hate it maybe you'll love it but for me a horror fan if you like the type of movies i enjoy you know the stuff i review on fright films or things like that go watch this you'll probably dig it Hey, just want to take a quick break and thank you for watching this video. I really appreciate it. It helps me out. And if you want to know when I upload new stuff, be sure to click that subscribe button and be sure to ring the bell to get notified, as all the YouTubers like to say, uh, because it really helps me out. It tells me you want to see more content, tells me the type of content that you want to see, and it lets you know when I've got new content out. So now, back to the review. Now, to get into some minor spoilers, again, not, not plot spoilers, but just even talking about this film tonally, is hard to do without kind of giving stuff away, but but here we go. The opening scene of this film really, to me, tells you the movie it is. And I think it's something that horror fans, diehard, you know, horror fans, are going to, to see this opening and they're going to go, I know exactly what this movie is. But I think a lot of general audiences that are maybe just going for like a Friday night horror movie, you know, are going to see this and go... Uh, that was a weird opening scene. Okay, and we're now we're back into the regular movie. Because James Wan does something really, really smart here, which is also, I think, the film's weakness. He makes the first, you know, half or so of this movie, after that opening scene, feel like one of his other movies. And I think that's both a positive um, aspect and a negative aspect. To me, the, the, the weakest part of this movie is the color grading. That's a weird thing to say, but it's true. I think the, the weakest part of this movie is the color grading because it's got those blue tones with like pops of red that that one kind of established. Again, another thing that he kind of built in with with like Dead Silence and Insidious. But since then, and it's not his fault. I mean, it, it's his style. It's what he likes his movies to look like. However, since then, a lot of filmmakers and these big studio horror movies have taken that exact same color grading style and slapped it on every single movie. And so, to me, that made the film feel kind of bland to look at. Not in every case, because there's a lot of great shots in this that are reminiscent of stuff like The Frighteners, or uh, Early Sam Raimi, or Dario Argento, for sure, like I talked about. Like, this film is hugely influenced by Giallo. Um, and it is... It, very much in the in the angles and the 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 without it's hard to again talk about but like uh uh the the villain of the film will say the kind of the way that they look they look and the weapon they use and stuff definitely feels like italian horror um that kind of thriller horror giallo films it, it, it's definitely reminiscent of that. So I think it's really smart because I feel like it's intentional. And there's going to be people walking out of this film that go, was all that, uh, was this meant to be this type of movie? And I 100% after watching this think that it was. I think everything in this film is intentional by James Wan, right down to the color grading telling you, yeah, it's just like every other horror movie. And it's not. And so I think that's an incredibly smart thing that I can appreciate from like a filmmaking standpoint, but from a visual standpoint for like the first, like I said, hour or so of this movie before you kind of really settle into the type of movie it's going to be, um, it, 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 the, some of that kind of that color grading and, and style of filmmaking just kind of feels bland. 
but it makes everything that happens in the back half of the movie um and and early on too there's little pops of like like i talk about these like angles and these shots that he chooses to feel very reminiscent of those films but it makes everything that happens in the back half of this film uh feel very uh uh original and surprising well original we'll get into that but very surprising to say the least i mentioned four directors early on um sam raimi peter jackson dario argento frank henenlotter and i think all of those filmmakers had a big influence on this movie however one of those filmmakers uh one of their films and that's all i'll say i think had much more than a big influence on this movie um and it's 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 so much so that if you are familiar with the movie I'm referencing without saying, and I know this is super vague, but there's a reason for that, uh, you will find exact plot beats from that movie in this movie. Like, it's, I, I, I won't go so far as to say that it's, uh, um, you know, exactly like copying it, because it does do some different stuff, but it is incredibly reminiscent and incredibly influenced by one particular film by one of those four directors the reason i'm not saying it is because um when i was reading comments on one of those reviews somebody said oh it was great it reminded me of this movie and i went oh that's interesting i would never have expected that and it didn't ruin my enjoyment of the film but definitely going in I knew from the opening scene exactly what was going to happen in this movie because somebody had mentioned the name of that particular movie in the comments. Now, you may have seen it somewhere else or something, but but try to avoid that. Try to avoid people comparing this movie to other movies because I think you'll get more enjoyment out of it if you go in and watch this movie and then you can go, oh, this is like da-da-da. You know, this is like that movie. Again, apologies for being vague, but I want you to go in as a horror movie fan and enjoy this. And here's what I will say. If after watching Malignant, you don't know what movie I'm talking about, go look up. There's plenty of lists people have created online and it, of like, you know, films Malignant, you know, references or whatever. And it's almost always number one. Like it's the big one on there where people are like, yeah, it's exactly like this movie. You'll see it in, like I said, review comments, all kinds of things. So don't spoil it for anybody, but if they're a horror movie fan and they've seen this particular movie, they'll pick it up. But it is weird to watch like a $40 million version of that movie uh, as this movie. Like it's, it's you take a exploitation film kind of, and then you go, all right, great. Uh, let's, uh, let's slap $40 million on that. That doesn't happen very often anymore. So that was kind of weird. Again, this is one of those tough reviews where I can't really go into many more details other than that. I think... If you're a horror movie fan, and I said this earlier, but if you're a horror movie fan and you like the type of movies that I like, uh, stuff that's all over the place tonally, that, you know, that takes itself way too seriously, but also enjoys being bizarre and over the top, like, if you like those type of films, you'll dig this. And I have to applaud James Wan. I don't think this is, I don't, I don't. I just watched it last night, so I wouldn't, I don't know if I'd say this is his best movie, but I will say that it is definitely his most interesting and most bizarre movie, for sure. Go check out Malignant, it's, it's enjoyable, it's a crazy romp, and if you're a horror movie fan and you, you know, know a lot of, like, crazy movies, you'll probably have seen this and you'll know what, where this plot is going. But if you haven't and you're looking for a wild ride, definitely the last 30 minutes of this movie you're gonna be like, what? What is going on? So really, really, really great film. Malignant. Check it out. If you want to see more videos like this, definitely check out the rest of my impromptu reviews on this channel. I've got all kinds of them. I know I've been very busy lately with stuff outside of the channel, um, but uh, probably in the next week or two, um, I'll be I'll be getting back on track with like a regular schedule. But go back, watch some of those old reviews if you haven't seen them. Also, if you want to see more reviews of like crazy horror movies, check out Fright Films. It's my horror movie analytical show. Uh, the last episode I did was on the Blair Witch Project, but I do have a couple planned coming up very soon. On top of that, you can watch some of my artwork videos, food reviews, all kinds of stuff on the channel. So definitely subscribe if you can, if you're interested in seeing more. Ring the bell to be, get notified so you know when I do upload new videos, and I'll talk to you all next time.